Hey, everybody. This is Jordan McConnell with the Crohn's Veteran Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. I am joined by my amazing co-hosts, Vanika Wood and CJ Cabrera. How are you guys both doing today? Excellent day. Doing great. Awesome, awesome. Happy to hear that. Uh, we, we are honored and grateful to have a very special guest with us today. Braylon Books is in the house. Um, she, is handling, she is handling out of Southeast Michigan, and we, we are happy to have her. How are you doing, Braylon? Hey, guys. What's going on? Thank you for having me. Glad to be on. Thank you for coming on. This is such a pleasure and such an honor to have you on this on this platform. So thank Thanks. you. The honor is mine. Honestly, the honor is mine. You guys do great things in, uh, in the community and helping others. And um, you guys inspire me all the time. So thank you for having me. Well, I appreciate the kind words very, very, very much. And you know, first things first, um, you know, you know, before we get into your IBD background, you know, um, I'm just curious about you, and, 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 and I'm sure this, our listeners are too. So, if you can give us a little bit of a background about just, you know, who Brenda Braylon is, you know, where, where you're from, you know, what you do out there, you know, for a living and stuff, you know, it, I would appreciate it. Sure. Um, so, my name is Braylon. I am 36. I turned 36 in June, and um, 36 years young. Mm-hmm. Um, I am. Finding my way, honestly, in life right now, because I was diagnosed with Crohn's in 2015. So um, I grew up in Detroit, on the east side of Detroit. Um, I went to went to college at Central Michigan University. I got my bachelor's and um, or got my undergrad in early childhood education. I one day wanted to be a teacher that kind of changed over the years after I saw kind of what teachers got paid and what they had to deal with. So I went into retail and uh, just for a part-time gig, but my retail job kind of flew off. I got promoted about 17 times. Um, I then became a district manager. I ran DC, Baltimore and um, Delaware locations for a company called Aldo Shoes. Oh, I was with that company. Favorite places. <laughs> Mine too. I like spending money. So, um, so I was there for about uh, about twelve years. I then left that company, and then I went into hard like hardware and plumbing, which kind of set me up to be an interior designer. Um, so I do a little work with interior design, still in a little bit of a retail company, seller, trainer. Um, and then unfortunately, because I had Crohn's, I had to pull back from being full time. So, um, I still have one more surgery to go. And then after my surgery, my plan is to get back into either sales and retail or interior design, wherever life takes me. We'll see. Definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I love how the, we can sometimes have our life, our lives, uh, planned, but your skills are needed other places. So um, being able to just uh, adapt to the changes, I think is very admirable. Um, We can always say, you know what, I'm going to do this, but guess what God be like, you know what? No, I think you better off over here. So sometimes it's not your plan. It's a plan you're destined to actually have. So thank you for sharing that with us. Of course, of course. And that's, I think that's why I respond with, we'll see where life takes me because um, I used to be a very planned out person um, and then life happens, right? And not even life, but God happens. And God is like, well, that wasn't my plan for you all along. You had a plan, but that wasn't my plan. Um, So I've learned to take every chapter in my life as a blessing instead of a, a hindrance or a roadblock. And that's how I live my everyday life. Every day. I live it like it's my last day. So. I love it. I've been seeing your post on Instagram. Like you always doing something, having fun, <laughs> dog at the park, <laughs> friends out doing something. You always doing something. <laughs> I'll be trying. I'll be trying. You know, I, uh, like I said, I was sick for so many years and I could not leave the bedroom, let alone, or the bathroom, mm-hmm. um, let alone the house to do things, or I would have to um, cancel plans last minute. Um, you know, and my dog is a trooper. He's five years old, but when he was a puppy, that was when I was first diagnosed. And so he would have all this energy and he would be ready to go. 
And I would just lay there. I would cry. I would curl up and he would curl up right along with me. Mm -hmm. And so now that I'm so energetic, he's right along with me. Like, let's go. <laughs> I've been waiting for this my whole life. <laughs> That's great. Thank oh, yeah. you. That's great. Blessed. Very what blessed. Do, what kind of dog do you have? Come here, Arlo. Well, usually he comes, but I have a German Shepherd. He's uh, 105 pounds, plush hair, all his fur, um, and very, very well trained. We do training about twice a week. Um, he's very obedient, and very good dog. So that's all the hair you was cutting on your doggy yesterday? Or the uh, day? Today, today whoa yes so <laughs> i just brush him and you look at the brush and the brush looks like it's it's crazy it's crazy he, he so, must shed like yeah. crazy then he, huh. he shed so much and i think it's because it's the season is starting to kind of change so i think a new coat is coming in i don't know mm. i don't know it's not yeah. right now <laughs> yeah yeah Thank you. But you have some some uh, some positive outlets. I think it's very important for self care. Having like um, a support animal is always a good thing. I think I don't have an animal. Jordan, TJ, does. They do have animals as well. Um, I just never grasped um, the animal side. I did have a dog one time, but I, had to, I couldn't take. And I had a potty train Kiki. Kiki with pee pee in on the floor. I was like, baby, you got to go. Uh -uh. <laughs> I had it for about this many seconds. She was gone the next day. But still, I regret giving her away because I didn't have the time. But just transitioning through your life, Braylon, you have been this energetic, fun-loving person. You still are the person today. Do you mind like diving into some of the the uh, early on um, challenges or symptoms you started to experience when you were kind of like going through the challenges a bit? I know with your uh, inflammatory bowel disease. Of course. So when I first found out that anything was wrong, I was um, working part-time as a waitress to make extra mm -hmm. cash. Mm -hmm. um, I was spending a lot of money. So I thought, let me get a second job. Let me waitress. So I was waitressing. And so a part of that is if you close down the restaurant, you were able to get a free beer. And I had never really been into beer, but I learned to appreciate beer after working there. And so I've been working there for a couple months and it was like clockwork. I get off and I get a beer. And so I started to get symptoms where I would have a very upset stomach. Mm -hmm. And so I went to urgent care, just thinking it, thinking maybe I had food poisoning or something I ate. And the doctors there told me that um, I was abusing alcohol. So uh, I said, well, I have one beer when I get off. I didn't think that was, you know, enough. And they were like, well, that's probably what it's doing. Beer has a lot of wheat and da 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 da, -da. And so my mind was not on anything IBD. I thought it was something I was doing to myself. Mm -hmm. So I cut beer out and I got worse because my Crohn's was now starting to ramp to, to ramp up. Mm -hmm. And so I went back and I said, I haven't had beer. What's wrong? And I said, oh, it's probably all the fried food that you're eating. You work at a bar. Mm -hmm. So then again, I said, it's something I'm doing to myself. So I cut out fried foods. I started eating better. I got worse. So at this point, I had been sick for a straight four months. Um, I then got admitted to the ER, um, or I got, I went to the ER, then I got admitted to the hospital. They kept me for 15 days. I couldn't eat, drink. They did two MRIs. They did a CAT scan. They gave me an enema and, uh, it was the worst experience of my life because they held back the pain pills because my initial doctor said that I was abusing alcohol. So I wasn't able to get any pain relief. I was in pain. Mm. Uh, my stomach would look like I was about five, six months pregnant. I was bloating really bad. Um, and still, because of what my doctors were telling me, never imagined it was IBD. So they sent me home. They said that I need to stop drinking altogether, that I need to eat better, and I need to take care of myself. So I did that. Two months later, I was back into the ER. I was once again even worse. So at this point, they said, we're going to send our um, infectious disease doctor to see you. Um, have you been out of the country? I said, I have not. Um, they said, well, we're still going to send him to see you. That doctor then told me that um, that I just wasn't taking care of myself. It, it was never once even dived into IBD or IBS at all. 
So finally, um, this was probably month four, month five. I went back into the, the hospital. This is my third stay. They kept me for seven days. My third stay, the GI doctor happened to just pass by my room, wanted to just talk to me. He said, can you tell me your symptoms one more time? So I gave him all my symptoms. I said, I'm running to the bathroom probably about 15 times a day. I'm nauseous. I've lost about 20 pounds. You can see it in my face. You can see it in my skin. I'm sick and I don't know what's wrong. Mm -hmm. So finally he said that he was gonna run an additional test. And then he came back and said that I had ulcerative colitis. Okay. Um, about a year later, I got my first fistula, um, anal fissure actually. And then that doctor told me, it's not ulcerative colitis. You are full-blown Crohn's. And not only is it full-blown Crohn's, but you are a very severe case of Crohn's. And if we would have caught it probably three years prior, you probably wouldn't be as far bad as you are now. But because every doctor told me I was doing it to myself, I had no idea. It's all your fault, Braylon. It was all my fault. Oh. Shake my head. That, that, makes, that makes me mad. Uh, <laughs> like, like so it, especially the part with the pain pills, like, like they're not giving you any pain medication, especially when you're telling them you're in pain. I would have yeah. definitely made a scene. <laughs> oh, yeah. and this <laughs> that's, was my first that's just me. It was my first go around. So I didn't know that I could say, you know what? I need to talk to management or I know that I'm not abusing anything or I know. So I just kind of, I was in shock. I think I was in so much pain that I trusted them. My trust lied in the professionals. Mm -hmm. So at no. the end of the day, I was just like, well, you know, it's what they say, you know? Nah, I would not sit there in pain at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's uh, just I can, me. I, I, I can I can relate. You know, I, you know, when I remember like, you know, when um, my second surgery going, the, going to the doctors and stuff and it's you know, in this kind of the same problem, you know, I was in searing pain for like six months or something like that. And, you know, I'm just trying to get, trying to get pain pills and stuff. I was, and my, little, and my little pain pills like that, I was popping them like Tic Tacs and stuff and they weren't even touching what I was going through. And, and I remember like, you know, talking to the doctors and they, you know, they treat you like, well, especially me, it's like, I, uh, I didn't have my medical records here at the time, you know? And so like, I got sick because, was, because I got um, originally sick in a different state. And so um, everybody just thought I was a junkie. Like, I, I got treated like a junkie, like, like no one gave me anything. And so trying so, so trying to get any kind of opioid at it and out of a doctor's hands was, you know, like, you know, like out of, you know, like, like over my dead body type of thing. And so, you know, so I can uh, definitely relate to needing that, those pain pills and not getting them. So, you know, so, you know, so um, that's, so you've earned your stripes there. So, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. That's, sorry, Georgia. That's so, that's, <clears throat> To me, it makes my heart beat fast and make me give me anxiety. Um, as an African American, I think we are oftentimes already judged about fictitious ailments to come into a facility that's supposed to help you with uh, release of pain management if need be. And because of a statement someone made about me that you have not identified to be accurate, you're going to deny me of one thing that I may need to help me stay here hungry 15 days, not eating, give me an enema. I'm already in pain and you suffer, you making me suffer more on top of all the other challenges I'm already having. Emotionally, I'm probably already probably a wreck emotionally, you know, and that happens. So that really makes me upset. That's why we need these type of conversations because if someone out there is going through anything remotely like that, know that it's not okay. It's that not normal. That's it's a normal. That's yep. a meme. Yep. Mm -hmm. We have yep. no diagnoses per a psychiatrist or a therapist to say, you know, this person have diagnoses of whatever, whatever. You don't have that. But yet, yeah, I can't get my medication. Yeah. Honey, yep. what? Can I say, can I talk to some people about some lawsuits from lawyers through oh, here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. If I could go back, it's so funny because so many times I look at the first doctor who ever dealt with me and I still know his full name, his credentials and where he works. And so many times I want to write him a letter. Um, the one who told me that I was abusing alcohol and I want to send him, not only do I have a permanent ileostomy bag, but I had my entire colon removed. Um, and because of him, we started so late, um, you know, in me getting the right kind of medication. So, you know, maybe not all the blame lies on him, but it's a full system. And when you look at the full system of it all, it was definitely because I was a young black woman 
who said certain things and they took those things and they ran with them because mm-hmm. they didn't know what was wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and instead of saying, you know, we don't know, let us do some further research or maybe you should go see such and such. They completely shut me down. They shut me out and they made me suffer more. And it does, it makes you upset. And so now when I spoke, I speak to young people, whether they're white, black, whatever, um, but especially, especially black people, I tell them, um, you need to push further. You need to ask to talk to their boss. You need to ask to talk to their boss. Um, and they can't deny you that care and they can't deny you that right. Right, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, thank you for sharing that with us. That just has got my, my mind thinking about no, oh, it's another conversation of the day for my mind. My mind is going right now. Yeah. So, so yeah. here we are now. You are you are really thriving now. Um, just from that time period into now, you've had a lot of things happen through the course of this diagnosis that you mentioned um, earlier, and sometimes you mentioned your post. I know you said you be you become more transparent now. Um, what, what helped you get to this place in your life at this moment where you're more open and transparent to share about your story? Um leaving off from kind of my third hospital stay um i didn't even there i didn't even know there was a community out here who had what i had so when i was first diagnosed like i said i was misdiagnosed with ulcerative colitis Mm -hmm. and when i was diagnosed with that i immediately got on the internet and i started to look up people and places that i could talk to and unfortunately everybody who i was finding with my disease was 60 year old white women, 70 year old white males. Um, There was no uh, connection. There was no um, relation to that. I couldn't relate to any of these people who had it. Um, And then they developed it when they were 60. And here it is, I'm 27 years old and I'm feeling like this or 28 years old. And I just felt so lost. So um, I finally found um, Crohn's and colitis a group here in Michigan Mm -hmm. and I joined um, and it wasn't a right fit for me still looking back, but they gave me a stepping stone um, to kind of put my, put my story out there because I knew there had to be other people who was dealing with things like I was dealing with things. So Mm -hmm. I said, if I'm dealing with it, there's somebody else who's dealing with it. Who's one probably embarrassed to talk about a pooping Mm -hmm. disease because it's not the prettiest disease to talk about. Um, two, who probably doesn't even know what's wrong with them. And they, they're they being told you're drinking too much or you're eating too much fried food. Um, and three, you, you know, you just, you look around and majority of the people who you work with, you go to school with, are, are skin tone. So when you look at our community, it's so small yet it's so large. And so it's really about putting yourself out there to branch out, to find those people who are so scared and so alone in this fight. And when you do put yourself out there, you find out that it's more people than not who struggle mm-hmm. with this. Um, so I've had the pleasure of meeting so many young people, black and white, but mostly black. Um, You know, I think of uh, this person who I met on IG, uh, Crohn's and Sexy, uh, also known as Renika. Um, She reached out to me early on in the game. And this was when I was still a little ashamed. I was a little embarrassed. Um, People knew I had a stomach issue, but I was very silent about it. Um, and then I met her and I read like posts after posts after posts. And every post was about one, how positive she was looking at her situation, two, how real she was about her situation, um, and three, her faith that she had, the faith in, in God. And, you know, I don't know if you guys are a spiritual or religious, um, but I put my faith in God. Mm -hmm. And that was for me, what kind of connected it all. It was all those three things. Mm -hmm. And then I found somebody who looked like me. Um, and so I said, well, if she reached out to me in such a strong way, what happens when I put my story out there and a little girl looks at me and say, well, she kind of looks like me Mm -hmm. and I'm going through the same things and she can put her story out there. So that kind of is what led me to just kind of be positive and share my story, even if it's the bad thing. 
Let's go, Renika. It's fine, folks. You got my heart. I'm over here. I can't even see it. My heart is just so full. I'm, I'm in tea. I'm in this invisible tea. I'm, 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 I'm a very emotional person, and it just makes me feel so good knowing that the connection we had shared at that moment was very personal to you and I both. Not going detail about it, but the fact that we were able to connect and the inspiration that I was able to provide to you, you also gave back to me. So that's what also gives me my momentum and my drive to continue on my path because I can only be my truth. But I was like, Dad, who else out here that felt like me that don't know that it's okay to share because maybe they can help somebody else outside of themselves. And that's how I started to share with people. And I wanted to be able to be a positive light because I want somebody to be a positive light into my life. So thank you for sharing that area and receiving that. And this is gonna trickle on to someone else that you meet on and on to where they can get some positivity as I have from you, give it to, give it to them. So I really appreciate you for that. It's crazy how we all connected with each other. I mean, it's cool. I mean, that's I mean, that's what this whole show is about. This whole show is about, you know, trying to, you know, yeah, being being the change you want to see in the world and you know, you know, and connecting people and stuff like that. And so it's just, it's awesome. And so, you know, so I'm I'm curious. And so like speaking of, you know, uh like support systems and stuff like that, you know, so like how's your, you know, your own family been, your own friends been in, you know, with, with your IBD journey? So I actually have a huge support system mm -hmm. um, and I have more people supporting me than not. Awesome. Um, and so I'm going to talk about the positive more than the negative, but the positive has been, um, you know, you, you don't know where people stand in your life until you go through something. Right. Um, and I lost my mom to breast cancer when I was 14. So, um, but with that, when I lost my mom, I gained six other moms um, because, you know, she's a fan of, she comes from a lot of siblings. So all of her sisters then became my mom. So in turn, um, I had a lot of people telling me my skirt was too tight. My short, my shirt was too revealing. Uh, I had too much makeup on. I needed to put my hair up and not wear it down on my shoulders. Um, so I had a lot more moms in my life, but when I hit my time where I really needed my family, my family stepped up so much. Um, and so I'm so grateful. Um, and then I have a huge friend load um, where I've met friends. I still have friends from back in high school, the, through college, through now. Um, and they are huge parts of my life. I recently obviously had surgery and I got home. And when I walked into my home, my friends found my spare key. I did not know this. They found my spare key. They stocked my fridge with things that I could eat after surgery. They washed oh, wow. my cover and my duvet and my sheets because they knew I had to have clean sheets um, coming home. They uh, cleaned my house. They had their little girls cleaning my house. Um, so it was such a warm, welcoming coming home. Um, so my, my support system has been huge, uh, as well as my Instagram followers, um, people that I just talked to. To, through passing my neighbors, um, people who you don't think will really show you love and be there for you has been a huge support system for me. And I definitely lean on my support system. I used to be like, I got this, I got this. Now when I'm having a bad day, I pick up a phone and sometimes I just cry and the other person is just there. They don't have to say anything. They know not to say anything. They just let me cry. Um, but on the flip side, you know, sometimes people aren't so supportive. I have a cousin who I grew up with and she went vegan probably two months before I decided to have surgery. And I don't know if you've ever met anybody who's vegan, but they're very strong in their veganism. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I love it. If that works, if that works for you, it works for you, but it did work for me. Um, I was already, as you guys know, we miss a lot of our nutrients. And that's the reason why we struggle with anemia. That's the reason why we struggle with arthritis. That's the reason why we aren't um, shining like the rest of the world is because we miss a lot of our nutrients because our autoimmune illness 
fights off a lot of the good stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So going vegan for me just wasn't the right time in my journey. And um, she told another cousin who shared with me and probably shouldn't have shared with me, but she shared with my cousin. She said, I'm very disappointed in her because she didn't try to go vegan and she's going to have surgery. She said, I feel like she didn't try hard enough. And because of that, I think I'm going to just not talk to her during this time. So during the hardest part of my time, she cut herself out of my life because I didn't go vegan and she thought that I didn't try hard enough. So you have mm -hmm. such a huge support system, but you also have those ones who struggle with supporting you. So, uh, you, know? you know, I'm, yeah, I'm always like, yeah, I mean, it's very, it's very revealing when you tell somebody that you're sick and then, you know, and then their actions after that. And so what? the real ones will stay and show you. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and honestly, Sometimes people who don't know just don't know how to support you. But they think that we're so we're so fragile or we're gonna break it. You know, we're we're fine. Just say, girl, you okay? You good. I love you. I don't know what you're going through, but guess what? Cousin or sister, brother, I'm here for you. You yeah. know, because they don't understand like it's not about what we could because they would never know what we go through. Yeah. It's more about. If I need you for something or for nothing, can I, can I call on you? Can yeah. you be here for me? You know, and I saw your support system and I was like, I said, y'all, y'all, I said, my friend, I said, I ain't getting no balloons. <laughs> I ain't getting no balloons. Y'all don't love me. I said, y'all don't love me. But I you, know, you got the balloons. Be like, go. I was like, that is so freaking, it was so dope. How they at the hospital with you outside? It was just such a dope experience. So when you go when you go into a situation with a very optimistic um personality and um overall good aura, I think the energy gonna overflow until you being out. You may have a little up and down, but whatever. But sooner or later, it's gonna all bounce itself out. That's so right. I know you appreciated that. You had the house clean, the food. You're like, oh my god. <laughs> it was so it was such a blessing it was such a blessing to walk into I mean even you know you touched on it for a second I didn't bring it up but I didn't know my family was going to be waiting outside of the hospital doors they weren't able to come in due to COVID mm -hmm. and my parents took me and um I got uh, parked in the parking lot and we were pulling into the parking lot and we probably had about nine people. They yeah. made signs and they were standing outside of the hospital saying, go Braylon, go Braylon, you can do it, you can do it. So um, cool. And it just made me cry. It made me so emotional, but more than anything, it made me go into my surgery feeling so confident. I mean, it was confidence that I didn't have riding in the car before I saw them until right. I saw them I just had this kind of confidence where I was like oh I got this I'll see y'all after surgery that's right. phenomenal I'm so I'm so happy to, I'm so happy to hear that so yeah that's great. Really great. I want to ask a question but I do have one more question though sure. now if you don't you don't feel comfortable sharing this I understand um we mean about, about your surgery I know you posted about it before how are you feeling now since that day that you went into those doors with the unknown of how you're going to uh, be perceived, feel about your personal appearance, about your self-confidence, to today as you stand here and share with us about the things you've been through, how do you feel from that day up until right now? No, that's actually a great question. So uh, again, I reached out to Crohn's and Sexy uh, when I found out I needed surgery. I had never been so scared in my life. Like I couldn't stop crying, Sorry, couldn't stop crying. And so I reached out to Renika and she gave me amazing advice. I mean, I probably wouldn't have gone through the surgery if I hadn't talked to her because mm -hmm. I felt that moment that I couldn't do it. I was like, I can't do it. I just, I can't do it. I prayed about it. I thought about it and I said, I couldn't do it. And it wasn't until I spoke to you um to where I said I got I remember listening to your last voice message and you said something of some sort of you know God wouldn't have brought you to it if he couldn't bring you through it mm -hmm. and I remember telling myself I said you know this is my test this is what I've been asking for my whole life I've been asking God to use me because I'm such a powerful, inspirational person. I'm always so positive, but God has to take you through a test to show people this is why I'm positive and this is why I'm strong, right? 
So um, that was the start of it. So I went through surgery and I felt a little uneasy, very scared. It was the all the unknown. Um, I was supposed to be in the hospital for seven days. I was only in the hospital for four days. My doctor said he had never seen anybody bounce back from surgery the way that I bounced back. Um, he said, I don't know who's been praying for you. My doctor, who has never talked about God ever, he said, I don't know who's been praying for you, but whoever's been praying for you, you need to stay close to that person. So I got out of the hospital within four days. I was home. I was healing. I was supposed to be off of work for eight weeks. I was only off for six weeks. I started to jog week seven. Um, I got my dog back, which is my definitely my emotional support. So he helped with the, the a little bit of depression I had, um, mm -hmm. bouncing back. And since surgery, going into surgery, I was 94 pounds. And now I'm like 125. Wow. Um, so I've gained so much more weight. I'm healthy. I jog every day. I'm able to work out. Um, I'm able to eat foods that I haven't been able to eat in four years. Wow. Um, that is amazing. Uh, I mean, I can go on and on, but as far as my self-confidence, me personally, um, I'm more confident. I'm more confident because I'm not running to the bathroom every three minutes, or it's not the thought of, um, am I going to eat and have to run to the bathroom immediately? Mm -hmm. I don't, I no longer have that anxiety. So I feel like my, my resilience and my attitude is just different. I walk with a little bit of more like pep in my stuff because I know I'm stronger and I am, um, you know, of course you have a couple setbacks with having a new, you know, a new thing attached to you, right. um, but there's more good than there is bad. Oh, yeah, it's a great attitude. And that's, you know, that's, yes. that's, what gets, that's what gets me through. You know, it's those kind of those kind of mindsets, you know, just, you know, just, just amazing. And that's, I mean, it's, I mean, you have to have just, you know, you know, but the with Crohn's is so, it's so important to have a you know, kind of glass half full, you know, vibe. Yeah. You know, that's being, right. being, that gratitude and stuff. So, um, CJ, is there, CJ, is anything else on your mind, man? Um, I just got to say about what, you know, Renika told you about, you know, God putting you in the situation and him bringing you through it. Like he wouldn't put you in it if you weren't able to get through it. Spoke, spoke volumes to me too. Oh, right. Awesome. Gave, gave me chills yeah. when I heard it. And I just repeated it. Like it gave me chills. I mean, <laughs> yeah, this, 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 we, we are so strong against you guys. Like this is such an awesome conversation because you know even me having my own journey with my ostomy I was so afraid of me being judged me being having a stigma oh look at her I'm the opposite I'm plus size so I said I've never seen a plus size girl with an ostomy I'm not getting that making myself speak to appease people around me and I said wait a minute are you crazy you prefer to stay sick and shut in versus being vibrant and resilient because of what someone think of you while they live their life abundantly, you at home faking your life. Mm. I said, okay, keep it up then. You good then. You feel good? Keep it up. This mm. is why I took myself in the mirror. I said, mom, let's get it. She said, well, let's get it, baby. <laughs> I went in. I wasn't crying after the surgery. Now, I said, you know what? One day's going to happen. One day I'm going to start crying. I said, where the tears? And one day I was like, why did it happen to me? I said, girl, you're so stupid. I got it. I was like, oh, I'm good now. Like a little, little like a little few seconds. No pain in my stomach, no bathroom urges, no nothing. I feel like I feel so relieved. I was telling the guys I had went to Atlanta. The first fight I had since I had my surgery, I said, suppose my butt, my bag is blow in the air. Yeah. I suppose I need to change it on the plane. I said, I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm not going. <laughs> we ready to quit. Well, I wasn't going. I said, well, suppose I go there and everything work out fine. And that's what happened. Everything worked out fine. Wow. So having that initial fear was going to uh, hinder me from enjoying life once again. But yet, see, I see, you know what? That's not what I'm about no more. I'm about being positive, setting the positive stones and being more resilient. And then having the faith that I'm going to be able to get through this challenge regardless of what happened. Because I am living my life in a better mindset today. Yep. So that's how I got through my challenges of the thought of having a colostomy, full, closed in colostomy and the colostomy y'all is not like the cone heads it ain't like that that's not how i look the cone heads the move i was talking to you about them on the chat, on the chat. 
Come on, a Barbie butt. I said, it's not like hmm. a cone head butt. That's like what it looked like. Duh. But it does have some challenges. But regardless of what go through, you can get through it. So I'm just so proud of you. So keep up the good work and keep up Thank the positivity. You. People Thank are really you. watching. You as well. You as well. You know, Thank you. I, I look at all your journeys. And, um, you know, I was just telling CJ, right, that uh, – uh, he inspires me, you know, I said, you know, I've always been a little intimidated. Um, <laughs> and I don't know what I think, because like, uh, again, he's so out there, and he's so outspoken. Um, but I used to get so intimidated. And I'd be like, I want to tell him how much he inspires me. So, I'm so, intimidated. <laughs> so instead, I would just put purple hearts under all of his posts. <laughs> I'd be doing but, that to the people. I just don't be saying anything. I just be putting their emojis. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but it wasn't until recently we had a conversation and I said, listen, you have inspired me more than you know. Um, and that's for all three of you guys. You know, whatever you're doing out here, you know, even if you feel like you have such a small um, a small community who's watching you, you are touching more people than you know. It's those people who are Thank probably you. too scared to speak up and say, hey, you've helped me. Um, mm -hmm. They're too intimidated, um, but you're reaching more people than you guys know. So the fact that you guys are doing this work is 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 beyond, um, beyond. Um, so you guys need to pat yourself on the back every day for what you do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That means a lot. Means a lot. Means it's what you know. It's what this is to you know a labor of love. You know, passion project. We're just here to help people. So to, you know, so to hear you say that, you know, means, means a lot to me. You know, I, I really appreciate it. And um, so again, Bayla, you know, I'm personally grateful. You know, to have you on the show, sharing your journey. You know, if you know, if, if people want to you know reach out to you, support you, what you do, how can they do that? Uh, definitely, you can uh, follow me on Instagram. That's where I share my story. I'm very vulnerable. I'm an open book. I try to share the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, my Instagram is bbuzzbrooks, B-B-U-Z-Z, -Z, Brooks, B-R-O-O-K-S. So you can find me on there and you, you can definitely reach out. Um, and I'm very open with giving out my phone number if you're more comfortable with that. So if you reach out to me there, I can then give a little bit more information, whether it's email, phone number. Um, and I like to travel too. So I'll pop up, I'll pop up at your front door if you need me to. I need you to do your you I mean, I told her I'd pop up. I told her I'd pop up because I might be going to Michigan next month. So. And he would pop up. Don't it's a good pop up. It's a yeah, good don't be surprised. I told him I got a bedroll for him. See, <laughs> I told her, I mean, don't be surprised when I show up. Come on. Like, yo, I'm what's like up? You. Like, yo, who's that guy outside? Come on, bring your dog. <laughs> Come on, bring your dog. Why too. he got a bag? <laughs> <laughs> That is too cool. Thank you, brother. Thank you for being on the show today yeah. and sharing your positive words of encouragement, inspiration. People are going to really be able to be uh, touched by your words today, and you're very, you're you're admired. So always know that whatever you do, you are reaching lives as well, one day at a time, or one step at a time. However you want to utilize that knowledge, but you are a walking uh, testimony, and your story deserves to be heard. So thank you for being a part of the show today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks for having me. And I look yeah. forward to uh, your future uh, endeavors and everything that you guys are going to um, reach, touch, and uh, and see. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm right behind you. I'm, I'm right behind you looking. So let's go. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, 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 thank you again. You know, I'll, I'll take us out of here. Um, you know, you know, if you like what you heard today, um, and if you support, you know, what we're doing, you know, please subscribe to our show on, on YouTube and all the podcast platforms. You can check us out on www.clubveteran.com. We have a brand new merch store that we're, we, we are very proud of at crohnsveteranstore.com. So please check that out. Um, currently right now, since we are Regal Health Awards the nominees, so of course go to Regal Health and uh, nominate us. We have a Best in Show 40 uh, discount right now. So, you know, so please you know, uh, check out some of our, our great Colitis and Crohn's merch. Um, and, then, and then also, um, you know, again, and thanks for the love, thanks for the support. That's what we got. So, Thank you. Uh, yeah. All righty. Mm -hmm. so. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. That's it.